Guys, welcome back. Your host, Mitchell from Notorious Radio 718. And this is Fight Pass with Mitch, and I got a special, special guest. Matt, the Steamroller Frivola! What's up, what's up? How we doing? Matt, the Steamroller Frivola. We out here at uh, Law MMA, my home gym, and uh, getting a little interview before some training. All right, so we're here, and as you guys know, November 12th, Madison Square Garden, Frivola is coming out against the highly touted prospect of Ottoman Izaitar. Tell me, Matt, when I spoke to you in Belmont, you already called this guy out. You yeah. already called him out months ago. Yeah, man, well, I was supposed to fight this guy. I was supposed to fight him in Abu Dhabi uh, January of 2021. And we get out to Abu Dhabi. I'm, I remember it was the morning of weigh-ins. I'm cutting weight. I have like three pounds to go. And then my manager at the time walks in and he just looks at me and he goes, Ottman's out. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? And this was after I had a bunch of fights pull out and he didn't even get into the details of like why the guy pulled out. But I was fucking, I was bumming. And uh, it came out that like, he like smuggled a bag in he tried to pull some shady shit, and uh, Dana White like cut him that day. And then uh, I guess a couple months later, Dana White let him back into the UFC. And once I heard that they let him back in the UFC, I knew I wanted that fight back. Oh, so this this is literally there's some bad blood over here. You really want to get this back from the time he made you fly out there. So this time he has to fly here exactly. to face you on home court. Yeah, he's got to fight me in New York, MSG. So it's going down. I got you. From your last fight in January, which you had a beautiful finish, tell me how much preparation has been going on since. And I know you've been traveling, cornering yeah. a lot of your local guys. And it's been, it's been going good, man. I've literally been training all year, you know. They had the UFC in Long Island. I wanted to fight on that card. You know, some contract dispute happened. You know, I wasn't able to get onto that card. I was, I was pretty, I was bumming about that, but... Uh, I kept in the gym, I kept training. We had all these contender series guys coming. We had uh, Bazooka, he got a big win. We had Charlie, he had a tough fight. Um, I was training with them, then we had Nazim. Nazim uh, came out there and had a great fight, got, got signed to the UFC. I was helping all three of those guys out, their entire camps, sparring them, getting them ready. And you know, these young guys, man, they, they keep me on my toes, you know? <laughs> no, that that's the best, that's the best. You're always you're giving knowledge, but also continuing to grow and develop your craft and everything. Exactly, man. Iron sharpens iron, and at this gym is, is the best example of that. I also wanted to ask you, so when did you actually start MMA and actually get into everything? Like, how early was it? Like, when did... Yeah, yeah, so, so I, I wrestled in high school, uh, but I only wrestled in high school because I love football and, and they told me you wrestle you'll be better at football <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know what UFC MMA was in high school Like I was like a tough guy like football player who just wrestled um, And then I went to uh, college. I, I played a little uh, junior college football I played a little lacrosse in college as well And then uh, I was just I was I was a kid man. I was I was messing up. I was I was partying I was you know, fucking around, whatnot. And uh, I got kicked off the lacrosse team. And then uh, I was just going down like a bad path or whatever. And uh, I remember I was in the dorm rooms in college and I was messing around with some kid. He was a little guy, he was my buddy. And I was a tough guy wrestler or whatever. I go and I shoot a double leg on him. And this dude knew jujitsu. The dude put me in a guillotine choke and put me to sleep, this oh, little wow. guy. And I remember I woke up and I was like, yo, what did you just do to me? <laughs> and then after that, he told me Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I came home, I found Matt Serra. I went to Serra BJJ and we, and we started the journey. Wow. So literally from the college dorm, yeah, you man. get put to sle sleep. Yeah. He tells you about Jiu Jitsu, you come back, you meet Matt Serra. Yep. And then this whole thing of your UFC run. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I went to uh, Serra BJJ. I was training at Serra BJJ for a while. And then I ended up going down to Tampa, Florida. I went to school at University of Tampa down there. And uh, Matt Serra referred me to Matt Arroyo down there. 
Matt Arroyo, yep. And I went down there. I linked up with Matt Arroyo, where I met uh, Billy Quarantello, Billy Q. Okay. He's fighting soon, too. He's fighting uh, December 10th. Nice, and, nice. And, uh, you know, I met Billy. I met Matt Arroyo. Billy Q had one amateur fight at the time. I had no amateur fights. I had, like, five months of jiu-jitsu under my belt, high school wrestler. And I was like, yeah, you know, I want to fight one day. And uh, me and Billy Q just started getting after it, you know, guided by Matt Arroyo down there. And uh, I started fighting amateur down in, uh, in Tampa, Florida. And then I would, I would come home for Christmases and, and summers, and I would train with Matt Serra, train with Ray Longo. And, uh, you know, I was, I was fighting down in Florida, and, and just I never stopped training. That was about 10 years ago. Wow. So this has been already for 10 years. So in a sense, you didn't do this really as a kid, any kickboxing, boxing, no. and this all happened in college. Yeah, well, I, I did a little Taekwondo when I was real, real young, you know. But uh, besides that, you know, I was, I was playing baseball, I was playing football, I was playing lacrosse, you know. I, I was always an athlete, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a twin brother, and okay. me and him were like always competing, always playing sports, always, you know. Always going hard, and uh, I think that that's what really kind of built my my competitive mindset, and uh, and you know we we've, we've been grinding, you know, always always driving for something. Tell me, I see always you post your dad up. Tell yeah. me how that support means to you. It means the most, man. I I got the best support around. My dad hasn't missed a fight. You know, he's at every fight, and he's the loudest guy in the fight <laughs> too. You know. Uh, and then my brother, he's always helping me with everything. And then my mom is always supporting too. I got an amazing wife who supports me as well. She cooks for me. She does. She deals with me when I'm cutting weight and uh, when I'm pretty hard to deal with. You know, fight <laughs> camp. I'm not the. I'm not the most friendly guy. But I, you can't be. This uh, is. This is in friendly times in a sense. Yeah, but she gets it, man. She. She's been with me since I've been an amateur. So. She knew what she was getting into, and uh, and she supported me the whole way, and uh, you know it's 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 a blessing to have uh, the support, and you know that's that's really why I do it too. You know, every fight I have, uh, my family comes, my friends come, and it turns into a party. You know, yeah, yeah. Win, lose, or draw, I go out there, I fight, I fight my heart out, and afterwards we celebrate. No, no, that's honestly the best way. I want to ask you, since you're fighting in MSG, how much more does this mean to you than versus, like, say, flying out to, like, Vegas or going out to Abu Dhabi, like, fighting in your almost, this is your backyard. Yeah, man, it's huge. You know, the most famous arena in the world. Um, you know, they always go to uh, MSG in November. The UFC is always there in November, so I always got November, like, circled. I always want to get that MSG fight in November, get that big win, and then we enjoy Thanksgiving, we enjoy yep. Christmas, and we get after it in the New Year's. Uh, it's huge, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting to have a, a great crowd there. You know, everybody's supporting and uh, supporting a, a local Long Island kid, you know, who's chasing his dreams. I, I feel that. I'm telling you. It's real. Tell me, who's in your corner that night? We're gonna have head coach Ray Longo is gonna okay. be there. I got my my day one homie Billy Q, who's uh, you know been my training partner for ten years. And I got my brother, man. My brother's gonna be there. Charlie McFresh. Cheesy His McFresh. Oh, cheesy cheese. McFresh. Yeah. The cheese roller. The cheese roller. <laughs> Yo, he also did something I seen with this rowdy boxing. Yeah, yeah. He's coming up. He did, man. Uh, you know, it was always like I was, I was the fighter, he was the lover. You know, I, I was the linebacker, he was the safety kind of deal. Uh, he's a funny guy, but uh, he's a he's a huge MMA fan. You know, he, and and he likes to like break down fights for me and stuff, and like tell me, you know, keep keep my hands up, you know, whatnot. And I'm like, come on, Jimmy, relax. But. Uh, he stepped up, man. It was for my bachelor party, actually. I had my bachelor party, and we hit up uh, Barstool for Rough and Rowdy. Okay. And I was like, I'm going to have my bachelor party in West Virginia. Let's get my brother a fight. You know, <laughs> he's never fought before. Uh, you know, so it, it was kind of like uh, our, our roles were reversed. So I trained him up, man. I trained him up for that fight. Did he have to make a certain weight? He had to make weight. What was so the weight? Just was that... I, I want to say it was like maybe like 170. Okay. Like he didn't even really have to cut any weight, but I like made made sure that he cut weight okay. just for him to get the whole experience. That's good. You That's know, good. And, and I was bringing all my buddies, like uh, all my buddies who who don't fight or anything. I was bringing like them all into sparring. <laughs> so I, I would have sparring sessions at my house. I set up like a, 
like a boxing ring almost. Like I set up a couple of like trash cans and I just put ropes around the trash cans. Inside or outside? Outside. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> and, uh, and I would have like my buddies like each round, a fresh guy go on them to spar my brother just to give him like that like unorthodox, like crazy look, which is what Rough and Rowdy is. You know, mm -hmm. Rough and Rowdy, you don't really get like exactly. skilled fighters. You get these guys just throwing haymakers. So I had all my buddies lined up to spar my brother. And then once my brother would start doing good on one of them, I'd get him out and I'd go in there and yeah. I'd start beating him up a little bit. Yeah, just to give him, yeah, give him just different to looks. Make sure he could take a hit. You know, I had, no. to, had to make sure my brother could take a hit. And uh, he had a, dra a great uh, training camp. And then we went out to West Virginia and he knocked, he knocked that dude out in the oh, first round. Man. That, that, that definitely made the trip. <laughs> oh, it was great, man. It was, a, it was an unforgettable bachelor party and, uh, and it was great. That's good, that's good. <laughs> I want to ask you, I saw you also did a little military stint. I did. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, when I was down in Tampa at uh, University of Tampa, I did the ROTC program oh. there. And then I graduated and I commissioned as a lieutenant uh, in the military police was my MOS. And I did uh, eight years in the reserves. And okay. Yep, yep. I was down in Tampa for a little bit in the unit. And then when I moved back home, I moved back home about five, five six years ago, found a unit up here. And uh, they were really supportive of uh, my fighting career and everything, and uh, and it was great, man. I almost I almost went on a deployment to uh, Cuba, but uh, it was after like I won my second UFC fight, and I was like, listen, uh, you know my career's going real good, and uh, they were able to they let me stay so I could pursue my career and still just drill monthly with my unit, and uh, and it was good, man. It was it was a good stink in the army. No, that's awesome that the army got to understand that you served them good time, but now you're actually you're actually like inspiring other army guys and other guys who are in it that they can do it too. Because I'm sure there's so many disciplined, oh yeah, you know, athletes in no the military. Doubt. No doubt, you know, they have the whole army combatives uh, system down there, which is pretty much like submission grappling and stuff, and the, and they do it in their ACUs, so you could do like the gi chokes and stuff, and. Uh, and I remember I was teaching a little bit of the combatives, you know, helping these guys out. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's the warrior mindset. You know, you got you to gotta have that. And that's what helps me in the octagon today. I got you. If you had a message to a kid right now starting out, wanted to get into the UFC or just pursue professional MMA. Yeah. Like, what would be some advice that you would give him? Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. Find, find a jiu-jitsu gym. And, and start start grappling because uh, striking is amazing. You know, striking is great. You need that too, but it takes years to master Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, so I would say, you know, get into a Jiu-Jitsu gym. I always tell these young fighters here, man, uh, really get into your grappling and start com competing in uh, in uh, grappling tournaments. And like I, I would I would say I did about you know, four or five uh, grappling tournaments before I took my first MMA fight. And I also got my blue belt before I took my first MMA fight. You know, I was still striking throughout that whole journey. You know, I would, I would do Muay Thai class two or three times a week, but I would do jujitsu every day. And I really focused on my grappling. And then I started competing in grappling. I got my blue belt and then I started fighting MMA. Also, did you do anything in, in Thailand? You had any fights over there? I did, I did. I, I traveled, that was always a dream of mine, man. Uh, coming up, like, I, I fell in love with Muay Thai, the, the art of eight limbs, you know. Punches, knees, kicks, elbows. Uh, Clinch. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. And it was a dream of mine to go out to Thailand and, and learn from, from the motherland, you know. And uh, I was able to go out there the first time I went out there, I would believe it was 2015 or 2016. And I was out there, I went out there alone. I went out there alone for, uh, for five weeks, five, six weeks. And uh, I was able to get a fight out there. And, and when I went out there, I didn't train at an MMA gym. I was, I was in Bangkok for, for four weeks. And then I went to Phuket for three weeks. And I engulfed myself in Muay Thai. Oh. 
and I was training Muay Thai twice a day, like alongside these Thais, and just kind of learning how it was a way of life out there, you know? And, uh, and I was able to learn so much, and, uh, and I was able to take a fight out there, and, and, and it, was a, it was a fun fight, man. Uh, you know, I fought, I fought this Thai kid, and uh, I remember I, I look at him and I'm like, and I look at the trainer who brought me there, and I'm like, you want me to fight this kid? Like, I got like I got like 15 pounds on him. Oh, it wasn't like weight. It wasn't a weight division. No, they didn't. They didn't weigh us in or anything. Oh, and, wow. I, and I was bigger than him. And I was like, and he was like, it's okay. This guy, this guy's got 50 fights. I'm like, okay, man. <laughs> and then, and then I, we come out, and uh, the way they fight in Thailand, it's like the first round is very slow, you know, because the only way you could bet in Thailand is through the Muay Thai fights. So the first round of these fights, like all the betters are like betting and stuff. Mm. So uh, they always they like to match up like a big foreigner versus like an experienced Thai. That's like how they like to like yeah. even out the odds a little. And uh, I'm out there in the first round. I mean, they call me the steamroller for a reason. I kind of <laughs> I kind of come out and I fucking I go for it. You know, I, I I'm not a I'm not a slow starter. Exactly, you bum rush them. But but I was engulfed in the Muay Thai. I wanted to do it their way. Like I even did a little like Y crew dance before. <laughs> you um, wore all the straps. Yeah, I did it all, man. Yeah. I did it all. And and I'm out there like going slow in the first round. And then the dude just smashes me with an elbow, breaks my nose in the first round, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> but then I went out there round two and I just knocked him out. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, let me take care of this business. Yeah, man. And uh, I kind of, I face planted him, and uh, and I was like a little nervous afterwards. I was like, shit, man, are we getting out of here alive now? <laughs> but uh, everybody was cool, man. It was, uh, they call Thailand the land of smiles. <laughs> you know, everyone is super friendly, and uh, you know, whenever I tell anybody out there, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here to train Muay Thai. I'm here to train, learn Muay Thai, and they love you. They just yeah. go, oh, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, you know. <laughs> It's, it's their pastime. It's their pastime, yeah, no. and uh, they love that foreigners come travel there to, to learn the art. So No, no. They have a lot of good gyms out there, I know. Yes, yes. That are, you know, they have their own camps out there for MMA that they have converted more, and they oh, yeah. brought wrestling, and of course, yep, people I trained at uh, Tiger Muay Thai when I was out there. Amazing gym. It was, it was uh, like, their, their class schedule is un unreal. The fighters there are amazing. You know, they got a lot of like the Russian fighters out there. Yep, they got yep. a lot of Europeans out there. Um, and everybody's there traveling, you know, for the same purpose. To get better. To, yeah, to get better, to train, to, uh, and, it, and it's it's a great mindset. You meet so many people and uh, it, was a, it was an amazing experience. No, that's awesome. So you have a wrestling background, got into jujitsu, did the army, went to the motherland, practiced Thailand. I mean, this is in a sense what embodies a UFC fighter, a person who has all this experience from so many different sports yes. and actually being a natural born athlete is what really, really led you to this day and to like contend in the most serious MMA promotion in the world. Yeah, no doubt, man. I love mixed martial arts and I love each martial art, you know, in it. And uh, I always, I always go through, you know, phases like, like, you know, I, I, I love, I go on a jujitsu kick. I'm just doing a lot of jujitsu. I love it. You know, I go to, on a Muay Thai kick. I just love Muay Thai. I go on a boxing kick. I'm just getting to, falling in love with the sweet science. <laughs> yep, yep. You know, I go on a wrestling kick. But, uh, you know, when I have a, a fight coming up, when I start the camp, what comes most natural to me is, is blending all those together. Yeah blending all those martial arts together and, and putting it on display in the cage. Do you feel like each training camp is more designed for the opponent you're going against? Or is it more like, listen, I'm just gonna, I need to prepare in all these areas. In general, you got yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Art, like, like I know sometimes boxers, like they go against a South Pole or they know like certain style of fighting. So I feel like everyone has their own like way to prepare. Yes. Is it like a general system or do you feel like, you're like, oh, this guy's a crazy wrestler. I gotta like really. You know, earlier in my career, um, I was really focused on myself because, you know, as amateurs, even beginning of your pro careers, you know, Opponents change like that, you yeah, know. Yeah. Guys fall out, guys pull out. You get a new opponent and whatnot. So it, it was very focused on, on on what I'm gonna do, you know, my plan. But 
now at this level, at the highest level, you know, I got an opponent, you know, you have to be analytical about it. You have to look at look at your opponent. Once once I get a name, you know, I watch all his fights. I come up with a game plan. You know, I look about how, how I want to beat him. You know, what's this guy want to do? You know, how, how what's the best the best path to victory for me? And uh, and then we go from there. You know, I talk with my coaches and uh, and we, we you know, we figure out what we want to focus on for this camp, how we want to beat this guy. And then we really dial it in. You know, I always like to say uh, in between fight camps, you know, I'm I'm tr I'm always training and I'm and I'm having fun and I'm developing new weapons. Yeah. Once I get a name and a date, I start sharpening those weapons <laughs> for this opponent. So I I love that analogy, yeah. you know, like a butcher. Exactly. You know, just ready to kill his <laughs> his prey. Exactly. Matt, Matt, that's fantastic. And I really love the ambiance of this gym. I want to thank you for having us here. And I can't wait to watch you. Notorious Radio 708 will be there at MSG November 12th. Rooting for Matt, the steamroller for Vola, lightweight and future champion out of Law MMA. And Matt, thank you for thank having you, us bro. again. And remember, if it ain't Notorious, I don't want it. Thank you and see you soon. Peace.